Hey guys, right now I'm going to be going over um, the Functions Lab 1 tutorial workshop um, and I'm going to be doing question 1. Um, so we can see from the question that we're given a, follow or a function called triple and it returns to us um, whatever our input is multiplied by 3. So we've got our return type here is an integer. We've got the name of the function is triple. We have our input is an is this variable n, which is an integer, um, and then it's going to return n times 3. So let's just look at the first part of it. Um, and anything we do here, we can always test with uh, processing, which is great, but just make sure when you do it, you have void set up. Um, I know some people are having issues with mixing active and static mode, and that's because you were trying to write this function but you didn't have void setup. So if you have functions and you need to include this void setup so you don't get that error. Um, but first let's just take a look at this uh, triple one and see what's gonna happen with it and if it's even valid. Um, so first we're calling triple um, and then we come into triple and we give triple the input of one. And triple requires that it has one input and re it requires that that one input is an integer. Um, so this works out because we're giving it 1, which is an integer. So then it's going to re return to us, it's, it, it, it will replace this n with 1, and then it will return to us 1 times 3, which will be 3. So we should get 3 down here, which we do. Um, so for 1.2, I'll just copy and paste what the problem is into here. Um, so we've got this integer m, which is... Two. We've got an integer p, which is calling triple m, and then we want to print p. Um, so we can come up here to where the calling of the function is, um, and it's um, it's going to input the variable m. Um, so m is two, which is an integer, and so if we come down here, we know that triple needs an integer, so this is valid. So we can call triple with our variable m2. So now m is going to be put into here. Um, so it'll become 2, and then 2 becomes the variable n. Um, so n is a local variable for, um, for triple. So now instead of the variable being m, it's replaced, and now n is our variable that we're looking at. So now we're going to get 2 times 3, uh, which will be 6. So now p is going to be equal to 6. And this works out as well because p is an integer and an integer is returned to us. So now when we print p, we should get 6, which we do. So let's look at this next one. Um, so we're going to call the function triple with 3 and 4. Um, and we can already see here that this is invalid. Um, the reason for this is because triple only takes one input, and we're trying to give triple two inputs. So we're saying, here triple, here are these two inputs, and triple's complaining because it's saying, you only told me what to do with one input, I don't know what else to do. Um, so it's complaining to us. So this is invalid, this, this won't run. Um, Alright, so on to 1.4. We've got an integer m, which is equal to 3, and then we want to print uh, triple m plus 2. So when we call triple, we're saying m, which is 3, plus 2, which is 5. So then when we call triple, um, n is going to be equal to 5, because that's m plus 2, or 3 plus 2. And then we enter in um, with n being equal to 5. And then we do 5 times 3, which is 15. And our output should be printed, or our effect should be 15. And we can see down here that that's correct. So now on to 1.5. Um, we have a variable fill red and it's a boolean and we're calling triple five for it. So this is invalid. We're going to get an error for this. Um, the reason for this is because um, we can call triple five. Um, as we know before, this works. We can call triple five it's going to um, put 5 in as n, uh, 5 times 3 is 15, and then it will return the integer 15 to us. But the issue is that we're trying to put an integer into a boolean. So fill red is supposed to be a boolean value, and we're trying to insert 
an integer, which doesn't work out. This isn't consistent, so we're going to get a complaint from processing. So this is invalid. Um, and then we've got this for our last 1.6. We've got this nested function call, which I know seems a bit confusing. Um, let's just try and work out down here what's going to happen. Um, so we've got this, the first thing that we want to do is hop into the middle, because um, as we know from uh, the basics of math operators, we need to go into the parentheses first. So first we'll do this triple i call. So we know that i is going to be equal to 1. I um, mean, if you're ever confused with any of this, sometimes I like to write it down on a piece of paper and basically do this process, which is um, just going through it myself and trying to figure out what the values are going to be if you're ever confused with anything. Um, so we know that i is going to be 1, so we can replace i with 1. And then when we call triple 1, um, n will now be equal to 1. 1 times 3 is 3, so 3 is going to be returned to us. So we know that triple 1 is going to equal 3. And then we can do this whole parenthesis. So we know j is now equal to 2. 3 plus 2 is 5. And as we know from our previous questions, triple 5 is going to give back 15 to us. So the value 15 should be printed. So when we run this, we can see that down here. Um, and another good thing to do if you're ever maybe a bit confused about what's happening is to use the debugger. And I will show you with, we'll go back to 1.2 because that's a good example to show the debugger with. Um, we can come up here and we can put breakpoints on everything that's happening. And then we can run this. It'll first stop it m is equal to 2. So we'll step through this. So we can see here our variable m, and then um, we have our triple m, which we know will be equal to 6, then we have this integer p. So we can step through that. Um, uh, now we, ju we jump into the function because we called triple m. Um, so now that shows our variable n, which is now 2. So m was 2, and then we put m into our, um, into our call for triple, and then triple replaces n with 2, so now we also have this local variable n, which is 2, so we can see that here, um, because these two variables are local to setup, and this variable is, this variable n is local to triple, um, so now we don't see these variables anymore, and we just see the variable n, but then if we step out of this, um, n is no longer here because we're back into the setup. So after we call triple, it comes back up to setup. Um, and this, uh, the, the variable n isn't local for setup. Variable n is local for triple, so we don't have n, any, or we don't see n anymore. Um, so now we come up to here and we go back up and we see m again because we're back into the setup function. Step through this, we now get our variable p is shown, which we know is 6. And then it steps through and we get our output. Um, so if you're ever confused with how something's working with a function, again, I, I suggest writing it down and kind of trying to work through it yourself or using the, de the debugger and stepping through um, each line of code to see what local variables and what global variables we have um, and kind of what's going on. So hopefully this helped for you guys.